Hello and welcome back to another video here on Rule the Game. In today's video, I'll show you how to play Apiary, a game by Connie Vogelman, a game for one to five players, lasts about 60 to 90 minutes, and it's recommended to start at age 14. This game has a bee theme, but also a space theme. So if you love nature, animals, bees, honey, all these kinds of things, you'll love this game. If, if you don't really like the space theme of it, you can easily ignore this. If you're more of a space lover, but not really that much a bee lover, you might not want to play this because the bee theme is much more ingrained in this than the space theme is. As usual, we start with the game objectives. Then I'll go into how to play the game. I'll have some hints for you if you play the first game. And afterwards, we'll do the game setup section. And if you've never been to the channel, please subscribe below. So now let's get started with the game objective. Rule the game. In Apiary, you'll receive some points during the game, although it's not that many, and most of them actually come at the end of the game. You see here the board, what it could look like at the end of the game. You also see that this is a table hog. So you won't really see the whole board at all times. We're going to have to move it around a little bit. It still goes a little further over here and it goes a little further over here, but we have almost everything together. The score tracker is around the board. That's where you'll then track all the points that you get during the game, but also at the end of the game. During the game, there are some activities that will give you victory points already. One of which is, for example, this one here. If you get on this token, then you'll get a victory point. So this is actually a symbol for victory points. Additional scores for the end of the game come from different sources. For one, we have the Queen's Favor track, which is this track down here. You can see the different player cubes right here. And if you move them a little bit, you actually see that they're, they have some victory points underneath them. And so first thing you can do is you give every player the number of victory points that they have underneath their space or the space before them in case there is no victory point on the space where they ended up. The second item that happens here on the main board where you get points is in the hibernation comb where you get victory points depending on if you have gained a majority in this comb. So if we look at the big hive here, then here you'll see that the red one actually has three bees. So they have the majority, so they get seven victory points here. And the two victory points get split between the green and the yellow because both of them have one in there. Over here, there is one space that's unoccupied. It doesn't matter. We just look at how many of these bee tokens are here. In this case, red and green have the same number. So they'll split the, the three victory points, round it down, which means each of them gets one victory point. And over here, the majority gets five victory points, so yellow gets five victory points. When you get these points, of course, you just move your score tracker around the board. These are the points that you get on the main board. Then every player, and I'm gonna move things around here, but every player has their own player's board, which you see over here. In some cases, the player board might have some seed cards that are planted below it. If there are some seed cards that have been planted, then the person also gets victory point. If they fulfill certain conditions down here, you can read them. Most of the cards have different conditions and give you different number of points. Next, each player has this tile on their hive here. And here, this is the faction tile that gives each player slightly different conditions to score. In this case, it's three victory points per lighting cards that is adjacent to this tile, which means it's, it's these two that are adjacent to this tile. So in this case, you get six points for this. In addition, all of the red, green, and blue cards have here victory points on the side. You also add those up. In some cases, those might also be zero victory points. 
And then you have also some yellow cards here. They will also have a condition. And if you fulfill that condition, you also get a number of victory points. And last, you get, if you cover the full hive, that is below here, and you actually see here, if I moved all this, this is the full hive that you have available. If I were able to cover this full hive, I can get eight victory points. I did not cover these two tiles, so I didn't get this. Same is also for these additional hex, hexes that you can add. Here it says actually at the game end, you'll get eight points if you've filled this hex, which in this case we didn't, we only had one tile on it. And so you add up all these points that I just mentioned, whoever has the most points at the end of that will win the game. And if there's a tie, then the person who has the most active bees still in the game will win. And otherwise, the two players, just or three players even, just share the win. Now let's go see how to play this game. Apiary is a turn-based game. On your turn, you have exactly two options for an action. Either you place an active bee somewhere in the main board, or you retrieve all your active bees from the board. We'll first look into how to place a bee on the board. Now, as you can see, the board has different sections. Everywhere where you see these icons here, you can place a bee. So there's six different activities that you can do depending on where you place these bees. We'll go through them now, one by one. To place a bee, you pick up a bee from your active pool here on your docking mat, and you place it in one of these symbols here that you have six of. And if you have two symbols next to each other, you'll always place your bee in either the leftmost or the topmost symbol that you have available. Now be aware that you can never change the number that is on top here of the bee because your bees will always grow and get older. They will always have, an, uh, have a higher number on, on later turns. And so you can't just randomly change that number. You can only place a bee if you actually have bees here in your active pool. If you do not have bees in your active pool, you'll first have to do a turn where you retrieve all the bees where they then come back on your pool and you can use them actively again later. Should you not even have any bees on the board anymore or in your landing area, then you can actually get a free bee that you can place in your active pool and you can play that later. Now we start with the action of exploring. This is this section up here. You'll place your bee up here on the left upper side. And what you can do now is that you can move this mother queen around on this board here of exploring, and you can move it up to a certain number of spaces. And the space, the number of spaces is the sum of the two bees that you have up here. And if it's only one bee in this case, it's up to two spaces that I could move the queen ship. As you can see, there are different places where I can move this queen ship now to. Either I can move it to one of the spaces that is that doesn't have one of these planet cards on it yet. So let's say we'll move the, the queen ship right here. You see there is a sign for this symbol. This here means you get wax. So you place the queen ship here. You'll take this thing and put it on your docking mat. And you will then pick up a wax that you will place somewhere on your board where you actually have wax symbols. And you see in this case, we have wax and honey symbol mixed here, wax and honey mixed here, and wax and honey mixed here. I can place it anywhere because they're all free. Next, I'll pull a new card of a new planet and I'll place it underneath where the queen ship not just went. And I will then take one of the resources and resources in this case are always the water, this green thingy and the flower. And you can decide which one you want to take and place it on this new planet that you just placed in this square that is empty up here. 
And now I can take these two resources that are on this planet, which means the flower and the green thing. And again, I'll take these two tokens and I will place them somewhere on my hive. And of course, I'll have to place them somewhere where I actually have here these resources available. As you can see, these are mixed symbols here, flower and green thing. Here's just water. Here is any kind of resource and I'll place them right here. And that will be the end of the turn. Now, let's say I hadn't wanted to go onto this field, but instead I wanted to move over here to a planet that is already here. On this planet, you see there's already a water, but there's no other resource here yet on this other extra square that's there. Again, I can just take any resource that I want to take, but again, it's only the flowers, the green and, and the blues that you can use, not the wax, not the honey. You place it here. Now you can take those two resources. And as before, you'll place these two resources on a empty field in your hive. And that will be your turn. If at the end of the turn, you have an extra resource that you can't place anywhere here, on your hive, so not on these two black ones or not on a green uh, piece that you have, you can return the token that you received back to the, the, the resource dash here. And instead, you will get down here a point on your green's favor track. That will help you later to also gain victory points. You're always allowed to reshuffle all these resources on your hive the way you want it and if you want to you can also redistribute it rather inefficiently so that you actually have extras that you can dis discard them and actually get some queen favors now in many cases in many activities there is a special ability that you can only do if you place a 4b a strength 4b on this space so if i had taken this strength 4b and I had then moved my B, my queen ship here, let's say to this space down here, I would have still gotten these two resources, the flower and the water. But then for the number 4B, I also gain whatever the strength 4 benefit is of this planet. And in this case, it says I would, I would be able to collect this, um, this recycle symbol actually means that you can do here, one of these benefits that you have up here on a green tile. So this is the symbol for a queen favorite track movement. So I can move here on the queen's favorite track by one. And I could do this actually from up to three of these green tiles that I have. In my case, I only have one of them. So it's not really that helpful. So this is what happens on the explore field. Next, I'll show you how to play the advanced action. Let's say I also take a strength 2b here and I place it here. As before, we're looking at a sum of two b's. In this case, there is also no b over here. But if this is field is empty, it always gives you plus one strength, which means I have now strength three. And that means that I can buy a tile from here, either this column or this column, because I have strength three. And so if I only had strength two, I could only buy here. Strength three, you can buy these two columns. If you have a strength five, you could buy all three columns. So if there were already another B on this field, when I come and it would actually sit here, when I come with my B, it automatically drops down on this field. Then I'll have my B. So now I have strength five. I can select from any of these different tiles and buy one. I can only place my B here in the advanced activity if I actually have the money to buy a tile. Because whenever I place a B, I need to be able to actually do an action on these fields. And an action in this case means I need to be able to buy a, a tile. Now you see the cost of each tile here on the bottom. You see that for the farms, you'll always have to pay these green things and water. Here, for the recruiting, you always need to pay a certain number of flowers. 
And here for the development, you'll always have to pay a certain number of wax. To pay for these tiles, you'll take the resources from your hive that you've collected and you return the resources back into all the stash here of all these resources. Once you've done this, you can take the tile that you've purchased and you place it somewhere in your hive on one of the hexes that you have available. So you can't place it over here. You have to place it somewhere where you have a space available. And it ne always needs to be adjacent to a, an existing tile that you already placed in your hive. If you place your tile on top of a symbol, in this case, it's a symbol for a card, then you'll also gain that card. The card goes into your hand. You can use that later. We're going to get into the cards later in, in this game. You'll then refill here the board by moving the tile up from the right to the left, and you'll take one from the top that you place right here. Please note that in the four and five player game, you'll actually have a field where you can place your bees up here for the farms, and you'll have one down here that is for recruiting and development. In the game for one to three players, then you actually use the sum to gather tiles here from any of these places, any of the three rows. And should you play a strength 4B, you'll also gain three victory points. Next, we're moving on to the conversion space. If you take a B and place it here, you can convert resources. You have the ability to convert a card to a card, a random resource into another random resource. And you see in this case also the random resource actually is flower, green thing, or um, the, the water that you can re replace. Then if you have these two uh, resources, you can replace them by wax. Or if you return these three different resources, you actually get a honey pot. Down here, you also see what are called the dances. In this case here, this dance is already finished. So you see that because there's a cube on it already. And if I wanted to do this dance or this conversion, I could do it. In this case, I would lose a victory point and I will gain a honey. If I do this conversion, then the player who's yellow here, who actually came up with this dance, they will automatically gain a point in the queen's favor track. If I want to actually set up a new dance, I would have to have played a four strength four B. For strength four Bs, you can teach a dance. Had I played a four, I would be able to pick up here this tile of different tokens. I can look at them all and I can select whichever tokens I want and I can place them here and it says you know you take a fiber and you take a water and you can exchange those two things into into a victory point and to a wax and because this is the dance that I taught I will also place my cube on it so in future if somebody uses it then they have to give me a point on the queen favor track and what I can still do now, even though I just taught this dance, I can even use it. And I can always use the conversions as many times as I have strength of a B. So for a strength 4B, I can do four conversions and I can select them in any kind of order. I can do four times exchanging cards. I can do two of this, one of this, and one of this. That's completely up to you. You have four conversions that you can do. The next option is to carve. So let's say we had still a strength 4B here in my active pool. I can place it here and you see here, I can only place strength 4Bs in the carving area. All the others cannot go here. And again, you also have to have the money then to actually buy from down here a card. And these tiles, as you can see, they cost you honey. They cost you between one and three honeys, I think. And they always have different end game scorings, so scoring abilities that you can use. Same as before, 
you place your strength four B on it, you pay whatever the resources are that, that you need to pay, you then take your tile and you place it somewhere in your hive in a space that is colored and not just black. And that will be the end of that turn. Next, I'll show you how to play the growth action. The grow activity lets you use one strength of your B. In this case, I have a strength 3B. One strength I can use to pay a flower to receive an additional B. Now, at the beginning, you will only have one extra B that is in reserve that you can take from reserve. And once I do this action, then I can place my strength 1B here in my active pool. Later on, you'll see you'll actually have more bees in reserve. So you might actually want to play this activity more than once. And you can do this because it only costs you one strength. And with a strength 3B, I could place, I could play this activity three times. There are some cases where you actually have three Bs. You have a total of four Bs only. So you will only be able to do at the most three times this action, but that only works really if three of your bees have disappeared, and I'll show you later how to disappear, but that three of them have disappeared, then you can get three new bees to start over with strength one bees. For two strengths, you can replace two different resources of fiber, water, and flower into an additional hex. And there, what you do is you just pick up one of those hexes and you somehow attach it to your hive up here. It can even go outside of your hive. So I could, I could place it here if I wanted to. It's a little difficult because I have a bee underneath. Um, but like, like that, for example, that will be perfectly fine. You can do this and then you can start playing tiles on it later. Here, what you do is you'll have to check what kind of strength your B has. For a strength 3B, I could do this activity three times for the one strength activity, or I could do once the one strength and once the two strength activity. If you place a strength 4B here, you can actually flip around your faction tile. That's this one here. If you flip it around, you'll see that here, the action faction tile up here has a different scoring condition for the end game. Uh, this upgrade is worth more, of course. Over here, you get just three points per lightning tile that's adjacent to it. Here, you get four points. So that's always a good option to do to get more points if you've done well in getting all the conditions fulfilled that it says in here. And the last action that you can do is down here, you can do research. If you do research, you place your B on it and you'll draw as many cards as you have strength. In this case, it's one card. And usually you then discard as many cards as you have extras because you can only keep one card of all the cards that you picked up. I only picked up one card, then I'll keep that card. Cards have different things on them. On the bottom, there are different endgame scoring abilities. Those you can only use if you plant your card here under your hive. To plant a card, you must play a strength 4B down here in the research part, and it says you can also plant a card, or you must have ability that shows you an ability from either some of the tiles or from a card that lets you also plant a card. If you plant a card, the card always goes here, and you only see the bottom part of it that has this end game scoring ability. As you can see on the player's boards down here, there are four spots. However, at the beginning, you're only allowed to take and use these two slots. The two further slots, you can only unlock if you have another frame that you added. So in this case, you know this one, this frame I've already added, which means I have unlocked one more seed spot. If I added one more frame, then I could also unlock this spot here. I've never seen anybody use all four slots, but it might happen. The other part of the card up here 
is an ability. This ability you can use before you move or after you move, immediately before or after. You just discard the card, you do whatever it says, and then you do your move. Or you do your move, and then you discard the card and do the activity that it says over here. Alternatively, you can also discard the card to get a random resource here, not wax and not honey, by discarding the card. Don't know, it seems like a waste to me uh, to do this kind of activity because it's not so easy to get the cards, at least in the beginning. Later on, it might be easier. And these are all the actions you can do by placing a bee. When you place a bee, you can always place a bee on any kind of action, no matter if there's already a bee on that spot. What happens then is you saw it up here. When I came, when there was already a bee here in that spot, and I came with my bee, then the other bee got moved, and I get the top spot. Now, if another bee came and wanted to play the grow action, and I already have my bee here, then I actually get bumped. So the other bee goes here, the person does all these actions. Now I, as the player of the bee that got bumped, I have the option to decide if I place this bee here in my landing area, or if I want it to be in the active pool so that I can use it afterwards to place it. In the landing area, I cannot use this bee afterwards to place it because it's not an active bee, it's, it just landed. If I want it in the active pool, I can put it in the active pool, but now I have to increase its strength by one. And this is where we come to the second action that you actually have available. Instead of placing a bee, I can retrieve my bees. I retrieve all my bees from the landing area and from the board. I always have to retrieve all of them. For retrieving, I'll take my bees, in this case I only have bees on the board, I'll take them, do not move the strength of them, and what I do first is when they come back in, I will now be able to gain some resources from them. For this, I, have, I place my bees on different green tiles that I have available. In this case, I only have one green tile, unfortunately. And for each bee that goes on a green tile, I then gain the resources that it says up here. In this case, I'll gain a queen's favor. So I'll move my token down here by one. On other tiles, as you can see up here, you can get victory points. Uh, you can also get resources. They're different things. It might be worth to have some green ones there so you get more resources when you retrieve bees. Once I've placed all my bees on all my green tiles, I then take them, place them back in the active pool after increasing their strength by one. And now you see I actually had a 4B that came back. The 4B has no higher strength than the 4. It will go in hibernation. The 4B goes straight to hibernation. So the 4B you can also not use to place it here on one of those green farm tiles to get some resources, but the strength 4B goes into reserve right away. You can't use it anymore next turn, and that's how they go away, and that's how you have to get some bees back later by using this action. But when you place one of those bees into hibernation, what that means is you take these little tokens that you have, and you get to place your token down here somewhere in the hibernation tone. You decide where you want to place it. You get different resources depending on where you place it. Over here, you get the queen's favor. Here you get a wax, here you get a random uh, random resource. Um, you get victory points if you place it here. Or over here you also get a random resource, plus you replace all the B tiles up here. Those are these, these three. You'll discard them, you'll take three new ones out if you place your B here. And that will be it for that B, for that B that went into hibernation. As I have explained in the beginning, in the game objective section, 
you'll try to gain a majority in one or even better in all of these different rectangles that you have here because you'll get victory points at the end if you have the majority in those rectangles. So to summarize the retrieving, you'll take all the bees from the board and from the landing area. You then check if you have a strength four bee, that bee goes into hibernation. You place a token somewhere in the hibernation cone. If you don't have strength four bees, all the other bees will first go onto your hive where they can go onto a farm tile, a green tile, but one, there's only one bee per tile that you can use. Then you get the resource from that tile and then you increase the strength of all those bees. They go back into your active pool and now you can use them to place them again in the next round. The game end is triggered when either the hibernation comb is completely filled or when one of the players has played their seventh token into the hibernation comb. After that turn, every player still gets one more turn, including the person who triggered the game end. And you can still do everything. You can even have some bees that go into hibernation. Now, if the hibernation comb is filled by that point, you won't be able to place a bee there. Or if you have used all your tokens already and you still had one more that could go into hibernation, in that case, instead of doing anything with the hibernation comb, you will actually gain a queen's favor. So you get a victory point there, most likely. And then we go into the end game scoring, which I explained in the game objective section. Now, let me explain to you quickly what the different tiles here do, the farming, the recruiting, and the development. The farming always has up here the ability that you have when you retrieve bees. Then in the middle, you always have the opportunity to store resources during the game. That's the only way to store resources and keep them. In some cases, you have combination of two items. Here's wax and honey. In this case, it's just water. Recruiting tiles always have up here an ability that you will be able to use for the rest of the game. And then the development tiles, they always have a, an action that's triggered as you get this tile. You can do that one time and then that tile is spent. And here are a few hints for the first game. You will notice in the very beginning that most players will go into the explore area to go and get some resources because you need the resources later to buy tiles and you do need tiles. And you will also see automatically that you will start with the flowers, the fiber and the water as resources. And you'll try to upgrade them towards wax because wax gives you development tiles and development tiles have really cool abilities. But also you need to gain all these resources to also upgrade towards honey. And then honey give you the great scoring abilities from the carving tile. Having said that, I think I've seen that most players don't really go too much into carving tiles unless you have a faction ability that really tells you you need to get a bunch of carving tiles because they're expensive. It's difficult to get there, but you can get a lot of points if your faction ability is focused on the carving tiles. Same up actually though with all the other tiles. The faction ability tells you quite well what you should focus on. And so each player has slightly different focus because they have a different ability and end scoring ability by the faction. And so go look at that first and then try to go in that direction. That's the easiest way to get a lot of points and figure out how you set up your strategy. Now I've seen some players who went crazy for farm tiles. That is great because if you have a bunch of those, you can 
get uh, you can get a lot of resources whenever you retrieve your bees and you try to retrieve the bees mostly only when you have all three or four bees in the, on the board in action. If you play a strategy where you can't get too many of the farm tiles because you have to focus on the development tiles, then you can also retrieve those bees a little earlier or when they get bumped off the board, you might not put them in the landing area, but put them straight again in the active zone so you can use them as active bees because active bees can help you more in that case. Because if you don't have many farm tiles, you won't get any return anyway when you retrieve the bees because you can't place enough bees on, on different farm tiles. Teaching a dance in the converting action sounds cool, but I have rarely seen anybody who did it then really gain much from it. You might want to do it, especially if you need a bunch of honey. You might want to teach a dance that gives you honey cheaper and faster. But usually people don't really use their dances. They try to get towards their resources differently. They might have some of the recruiting actions that will get them these resources or the conversion in another way. So teaching a dance might not really give you enough at the end of the game. I would say you definitely have to upgrade your faction tile because as I just said before, the faction tile can lead you in a, strate in a strategy. And if you flip it around, it's upgraded. You even get more points from this strategy. So it's definitely worth it. And you'll see once you play a bunch of cards, once you get a bunch of cards that the cards have amazing abilities and you might want to use these cards if you can get them somehow rather as an action than planting them planting them underneath your hive really is only worth it if you somehow can combine it with a strategy that you're already running anyway otherwise i would say rather use the activity from the card at the beginning or the end of the turn because usually these abilities are amazing and they really can help you quite a bit to achieve your goals. Don't be afraid of having bees going to hibernation. That's how this game is. Uh, you'll always have them going to hibernation. There's no way around it. And it will happen approximately the same number of times for each player, unless you have more bees. If you get more bees early on, then of course they, they don't operate so quickly. But most players will have like four or five uh, bees that go into hibernation. It's not a big deal. But that also means that you'll have to get new bees at some point. You'll have to do the growing action with a strength three bee or something like this so that you get more bees back and you can use them. But even there, I would not use strength one and strength two bees for the growing action or the research action, I would rather use stronger bees there because if you do that, then you can do several actions there. You can get several cards or you can get several bees at the same time from the reserve to use again. And that's Apiary. Next up is the game setup section. But before you go, please subscribe to the channel and I'm looking forward to having you back here again soon. To set up the game, you'll start with the big board. You'll take the sides that is uh, appropriate to the number of players that you have. Down here it says one to three players, or on the back side it will be four and five players. I'll set up a three player game. So you put the one to three player board side up here. Then you'll shuffle the carving cards here, the carving tiles, and you place them here on these six tiles that you have available and you'll return the other tiles back to the box. Then you'll take all the seed cards, you'll shuffle them and place them right here. You'll take the farm tiles, shuffle them, place them over here, open up the top three and place them on these fields. Then you take the recruit tiles, Shuffle them too, place them over here, 
open up the top three and you do the same thing also with the development cards, the red ones. These tiles also go over here, shuffle. You also shuffle the dancers. You'll take as many as you have spaces over here. You place them right here. The rest can go back into the box. Then you'll take the these yellow markers, shuffle them also, put them here on each tile one, face up. You also shuffle here the planet cards. You can place them right next to the planets that are here. And you also take these tokens here and place them here in the dance area. The queen chip goes here. Then every player gets a player board, a hive. You distribute them randomly. They're all different. They all have different bonus options on them. Then every player gets here a starting tile. They're all also very different. So you shuffle them, you distribute two to each player. Each player can then decide which one they want to take. However, for the first game, it's recommended that you'll start here with a starting tile that has a green star up here on top. Don't take the upgraded side, but take the other side and place it here on your hive where it's this faction tile that's up on top and the two starting tiles are down here. Then every player gets seven of these tokens that later on will go into the hibernation cone. They also get three cubes of which one goes here in score track zero, one goes here in queen favor track zero. You'll also take the extra hexes, you'll put them on the side. You also take all the different resources you have, you also put them aside. And then on every player's docking mat, you'll place as many bees in whichever strength that it says here on your starting faction tile, here for the, the green ones. I think all of them are one strength two and two strength one bees. You'll take those, you'll put them here in the active ones. Those are the bees you're going to start with. And one of your bees in this case will still be in reserve. You'll also still have one cube that might be used later for a dance. And that's the last step. You decide who will be the starting player. That person will move their cube here on the one. Second player to in clockwise order will go to two. And the third player will be on three victory points already because there's a slight bonus for the person who can get started. And that's it. We're ready to play this game.